Hi, this is Julian DeRazio. And this is Ian Sokolov. And, and this, this is, is Meaningless, meaningless Chatter. Chatter. You know, it's a debate podcast where we do debatey things and debate about debate shit. And wow, you know. so enthusiastic. You, okay, you, you know, you on know. this... On this podcast, what we do is we discuss topics of politics, but mostly philosophy, yeah. and try to bring an interesting twist to the argument that we see at hand. By what I usually try to do is just, well, what I like to do later on is just deconstruct all value to initial arguments. Because a lot of people like to say, well, freedom, and I just say, what's the value behind freedom? Or what's the value behind X, Y, or Z? Nothing really has an implicit value until you place a value to it. And while I'll agree with that, I go a different, very different direction. I yeah. say, because nothing really matters in the end, mm-hmm. why does it, why, why should we worry? Why should we question what makes us happy? Yeah. It's an absurdist take on all of the thing of all the topics that we come on, yeah. and even if it might seem a little bit political or even current, like current in like the climate that we're in, it's just us trying to shoot the shoot, shoot shoot the shoot. Yeah, we shoot, don't we shoot don't to shoot. We we don't hold opinions on this podcast. We try not to, yeah. and if we do, hey, little bit for you. Yeah. What we do here is we bring interesting arguments to interesting people. Yeah, like you, you, you interesting cutie. And, and you, you beautiful, beautiful mind. Yeah, especially Hill. Yeah, you're, you're especially really, really cute. We go call out one person that we know in the audience who might not even listen to this. Hill. Hill. I love you. Love you too, man. Okay, so the topic of today is... Superstitions. Should we believe in them or does it matter? I am for them. And I'm against them. Now... When we talk, I feel like this is us talking about literally any topic. Yeah. We might go off and start talking on, like, very small details that seem as if we're, like, talking about very large things. That's usually, like, the key factor that, like, links in other topics in between them. Exactly. So, like, we might start talking about superstition, but then we might start talking about the way you live your life. And what is love? Baby, don't hurt me. Don't hurt me no more. Yeah, that's fucking gone. (laughs) 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 Yeah, sure. (laughs) That that little transaction was cute. (laughs) So, but everything, if we start divulging, divulging? Yeah. From the conversation, it's it's what this podcast is about. It's an interesting argument or conversation between two people. About? Anything. Topic? Yeah. So right now, superstitions. Yeah. Since you are four, you have the floor. Okay. Okay, uh, so, uh, superstitions. I guess I need to go and walk myself into it. Uh, I believe as human, necess- like human beings should be superstitious. Not necessarily because, I, I believe it's a good, not necessarily a coping mechanism. I believe it's a good safety mechanism to keep themselves from dying from things that they've only heard of. So... Let's say there is a wolf. You're, let's say you're in a village, and the only thing you know is collecting collecting berries and running around. And somebody goes and says, Ooga Booga Wolf over there. But you know, it's a big, bad, scary wolf that turns green. You don't know if it exists or not, and it might seem improbable. But the truth is, is that if you do not know whether or not it exists to go and not try, it could lead to you dying. With, like, all-powerful things being... It's usually what it means when all powerful things or extremely powerful things are introduced to it that they have the ability to kill us in seconds. And even though they might not exist, the possibility of them being something out there, real, could lead to your death. And that's something that you would try to avoid. So, if I may, I no. think... Oh, well, goodbye, everyone. Yeah, fine. That's the end of the podcast, boys. <laughs> so... I believe, I agree with you, that that is a safety mechanism that humans instinctively have and should have, but to believe in such a superstition gives other people powers over you. They decide where you go, what you fear, who you talk to, what you do in life. That in itself is a horrible way to live, am I wrong? Oh yeah. So, I'm wrong. What? Yes. Yeah, you're wrong. No, okay, well fine, we'll no, get to that later. No, you're not wrong, you're go, continue. I'm not wrong. Yeah, you're good. But... If we believe that there is a big, bad, green wolf over there who can take off my head if I even think about him, and I never venture out to know, to see, the then bad, bad, the only people who do go out there are the ones who don't believe in the thing, and mm-hmm. whatever they find, they get to keep. Mm-hmm. I believe that superstition causes a, a, competi- a competition between groups of people. What we believe versus what you believe. 
if one tribe believes that there is a giant monster out there, so they'd never go over there, and the other tribe doesn't, they can hunt, they can gather over there and have no competition. Mm -hmm. I believe that superstitions do nothing but cause harm. All superstitions are, are people trying to make sense of a world that they don't understand, but not putting the effort into it to trying to understand it. Remember, science surfs on the wave of ignorance. You can't learn anything new if you're too scared to risk your own life. Well, if we were going to talk about uh, should people believe in superstition, let's talk about most of human history and who people are throughout most of human history. People are individuals. People are not... People, um, people are not organi organizations or they're not large groups. They've mostly just been individuals that have been hunter-gatherers. Now, these people don't necessarily understand the concept of science. Don't understand the concepts of... I mean, they don't understand the concept of science. They don't understand the concepts of just fear or anything. They only understand one thing. There is a legendary thing, creature, outside, supposedly, out there. And even though it might hurt them to not venture out and achieve or reach things out there like that, if they're at that low of a level where reaching out there would either mean life or death, they need to go, they need to be stuck in that situation where lowest amount of risk, highest amount of reward. If the points throughout all of history too, let's lead not just to individuals but through history in itself, when necessity comes, when situations are dire, they will eventually make that leap to go and surpass, yeah, surpass superstitions and look towards those dark areas that they have not been checking out their entire lives. So, I'm gonna bring in a little philosophy here. To keep myself off of an ivory tower, I'll make it plain. Mm -hmm. You know skepticism. Yeah. The idea that don't, it's basically don't take anything at face value. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So, just look at a skeptic. A skeptic would live so much longer in this society than anyone else would. Because a superstition is based off a real danger. We can both agree on that, yes? Mm -hmm. So if there is a real danger out there, and people are superstitious of it, a skeptic would want to know that. Am I wrong? Mm -hmm. So, take the skeptic. Seeks out the information that, you know what, maybe these superstitions are fake. He finds that either they are or they aren't. But now he knows for a fact because he did not believe in them. So wouldn't you say that this skeptic now has a leg up above everyone else? Oh, yeah, definitely. The people that venture out are the people that usually lead or get things. But the thing is, is that I believe that in itself, having, having mythos in the world or having information that's kept up like that leads to a society being formed or being created. So, let's say that, yes, it might be superstition that X, Y, or Z is created. It also might lead to people bonding together. People being created, and what is it, cultures being created, and organization. Screw culture, of course, that's my, that's my value, and that's my lack of value take. Screw everything that, uh, that's literally just worthless chanting and worthless anything. What I do have to say is that... Culture is usually accommodated with population, and accommodation, and like, population comes, what is it, uh, people able to protect themselves over safety, and, what is it, innovation. So, Julian, just a little sidebar between you and me. Maybe those listening can pick up on what I'm doing here. You are saying that by believing in superstitions, though they may not be true, it's, it's, a ben it's just beneficial for society as a whole. Yes. For, for reasons of keeping humanity safe for bringing people together and just creating a safer, more enjoyable society. Yes. So you're telling me that platonic lies should be followed. A platonic lie is a lie uh, that's used for the, benef for the benefit of other people. Like telling a population who might die of a horrible disease that, you know what, our species doesn't live past 40. Okay. I do not believe in the platonic lie. But and I'm saying, but... I, 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 don't, I don't have an extreme view on it. That's my view. My view is that avoid it when you can, because this is... By the way, this is completely unrelated to the entire podcast. Me and Ian have been having a feud for like the past <laughs> year and a half about the whole entire platonic lie. I think it's a gross thing that people use on both sides to go and harass specific groups of people. And I think that... In some situations, a platonic lie is the only humane way to do things. I don't think you should lie, 
But when it, when you need to, a platonic lie is not such a bad thing. Yeah, I understand that. But sometimes it's used in... It's sometimes used to generalize a bit too much. And I understand. That's the opposite in the world, too. That, you know, if you do that, then people will manipulate you. And that's usually the... That's why I hate it so much. Because I believe that people are just misinformed by the use of platonic lies. But I also believe that if used correctly, it could help out civilizations. Thank you, Julian. I just won that feat. So... I'm not fully endorsing it because I full because I understand that it's both a negative and a positive. I actually fucking hate them because that's literally how I've been justified throughout like a lot of oh, my... Oh, can we curse on this podcast? Yeah, sure. Cool. Okay. Uh, but yeah, no, I know that it can be for the betterment of civilization, but it's still not a good thing in my eyes. Now back to superstitions. You believe that platonic lies are not a good thing in your eyes, yes? You've stated, you've given me your opinion, yes? Yeah. So your, if your opinion is that platonic lies are inherently bad, but might have some good to them, then you also agree that superstitions are inherently bad, but might have some good to them. Oh, yeah. So if, the, if something is inherently bad, would you want it in your society? Take racism. No. Something that's inherently bad. Would you want that in your society? No, I would not want racism in my society, but there's also, when I say racism, I mean species, like you say spe you say racism is bad in itself, but it's a way that we use to categorize specific groups of people, by color. No, racism Or by is, race, by race, No, yeah. no, no, you're even wrong there. Racism is not used as a categorizing tool, it's a, it's a tool used by bigots trying to make their race- Oh, no, no, that's not what I mean, but like, we, what is it, what you do is that like, yes, racism is unjust- and I don't believe in it, and it's not good, of course. But, like, what I'm saying is that to go and say that a group of people, that, uh, what is it, a group of people sometimes don't share attributes is a stretch and not a stretch at the same time. With, you know, alt-right is sometimes, is, you know, most of the time neo-Nazi. Does that mean everybody in the alt-right is a neo-Nazi? No. It's, it's like all oranges are... Fruit, but it's, all there's fruits not are enough. Oranges. The, um, the point is that there's not enough information placed inside of it for it to truly be true, uh, for it to tr be true or not to be true. But uh, would you want racism in your society? Would I want platonic lies in my society? That's that's what this debate's about, apparently. No, no, that's what the the the, the question is being yes. broken down into. Yes. Would I want platonic lies in my society? Would you want platonic lies in your society? If they're used by a higher power to go and disenfranchise a group or disenfranchise a specific portion of people no but if i but if it's something that we as a people have to go and fight against that we're not trying to be accustomed to like people inside of our diver our diverse nation where the only thing that racism does is break it apart and it caused conflict inside of the streets. There you go, I just devalued it. But, like, it, it, like, causes conflict. I believe so. But, like, to go and say, everybody in North Korea, dirty, or something of that sort of, <laughs> that sort of statement. You get what I mean? It's not a, it's not something that I would like to say. And I'm not even, I don't even believe that. But, like, to go and say, discuss, so. like, to go and say disgusting statements against people that you're, are your enemy and will not be changing anytime soon. It's fine. I'd have to disagree entirely, though. Because to label another human being as something that they're not, and that you're, you just feel that they are, is what you feel about the alt-right. Think about it. If you label all alt-right Nazis... I believe you're Nazis. Nick. <laughs> if you believe that all, if you believe that all alt-right are Nazis, that's a bad thing, yes? Mm-hmm. If you believe that your enemy is a horrible monster, that's a bad thing then. Yeah, because but not the all... thing is, is that we're trying to make peace with the alt-right. We're trying to make peace with liberals and we're trying to make Why would you want to peace make... with conservatives. Because we are part of a single nation and we try to stay together. So... But guess what we're not trying to make peace with? Julian, Julian, wait. So yeah. you agree that there is conflict between liberals and alt-right, yes? What? <laughs> <laughs> you agree... That there is conflict between a liberal and an alt-right. Uh, yeah. So, you want that conflict... <laughs> <laughs> you want that conflict to be dissolved. Yeah. 
So wouldn't the best way is to drop all superstitions about both sides? Because if every alt-right person thinks that every liberal is a special snowflake who just wants to mooch off society, mm -hmm. and every liberal thinks all alt-right people are Nazis who hate all minorities, mm -hmm. then that conflict will always be there, am I right? Yeah, you're right. So, they have a superstition against each other. Mm. Once you take away those superstitions, all that's left is people with different opinions. They can get along. They can try to compromise, like we do here. Yeah, and honestly, I need to go and refute that in some sort of way. <laughs> How? Who knows? Okay. Um, I what? But there's some people <laughs> that believe in cultures that are so different from one another that they can oppose directly into what their core values are. It's Russia, well, what is it, the USSR and the United States. Okay, I'll bring that, that's a really good example that helps my point even more. Here we go. Listen here, take the USSR and America. Now I'm guessing you're talking about the Cold War, am I correct? I'm talking about political ideologies. Are you talking about the Cold War in specific though? I'm not necessarily talking about that, I'm talking okay. about communism and- uh, and, and capitalism, the difference between them. Yeah. So, the, you know why the only reason communism doesn't work? It's because, yeah, the, the whole entire- Of course, there's, like, things that we don't understand about it, but, like, it's because the- What is it? There's no perfect way. There's no perfect human being. There's no perfect group of people. Because Somebody people will have are a moral, selfish. Yeah, people will have moral lapses, and then eventually communism will break down, because communism needs a perfect system for it to work properly, and- Somebody, like, you know, if somebody just doesn't go and, like, they forge a check one day, then that's literally the corruption that brings down the entire mountain. Now, you agree that every communist society so far has had trouble. Yes. And you agree that all capitalist societies so far might seem stable but have ups and downs. Mm hmm So, you agree that there is some similarity between the two. Just, all, not, I'm not even using it as a point. I'm just making sure you're following me. Yes. So, if we can agree that these two different things need need different outcomes to happen for them to work perfectly, then we can look at each of them and try to find how they are similar. Look at communism. Take Russia, for instance. Run by who? Vladimir Putin. Now, would you agree that Vladimir Putin- but in the USSR, he was Stalin, a horrible, horrible individual. Exactly. Both worse of than worse than Vladimir Putin by by a large length. Yes. Let me say. Yeah, uh, huge. Yeah. <laughs> Anyone who anyway, everyone knows. Yeah. It's a real controversial statement. Nobody nobody back then though. Yeah. Jesus Christ. Real controversial statement. I hate Stalin and Hitler. Whoa, dude, uh, this guy is the pinnacle of a human being. <laughs> anyway, but um, take Putin or or even Stalin. They were people who rose to power with with what seemed to the people good intentions, but ultimately were selfish in gain. Mm -hmm. Take, uh... <laughs> take, take, take our president now, who some people agree with, some people disagree with. You cannot disagree with me that be when I say he rose to power because he was selfish. Yeah. That's how you survive in a capitalist society. By being selfish. Now, wouldn't you agree that if Putin and Trump wanted the same thing, they would go at each other. That's basically capitalism. So even a, 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 a country, even a country that is known for having a communist society and America, one of the pinnacle capitalist societies in the world, they still act in a, in, in a way that's extremely similar to each other. So when you say that there are two societies that are vastly different and will never get along, Hey, let me say, okay, what is the eventual end of communism? There is, no, you can't do that. Yeah, no, 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 I'm gonna Because do it depends. No, no, the eventual end of communism is, no the integration, is the integration of all into a communist society. Yes. Yeah. Now, let me guess, Demo democracy, or Democrat, not dem Democrats, democracy, or people that Democrats. are if founded inside a democracy, how are they going to act towards that? It depends. Do they vote to have communism? No. Well then, if they there's a, there's a point there's a people did that people are against. Did people vote it. to be communist? I'm trying to say that communism is imperialistic. And imperialism is the one group or a of any kind that cannot be taken seriously. Not be taken. Not, not not that's not it. Imperialism in itself is the one threatening ideology. Two. 
to anything. Really? If a disease, if a virus comes onto you, it's having a periodistic action because it's trying to find your body, it's trying to find the cells inside of your body, and it's trying to taint them, corrode them, and eventually kill you. Now, an imperialistic person is trying to go inside of you, inside of your country. Inside of your body, your country. <laughs> and it's trying to go and find, find weak points, trying to go and taint those weak points, and then eventually weaken your government. That's why, that's why, that's why the U.S. goes and it, it puts itself inside of other countries. To go and make sure that if it ever tries to attack us or ever tries to attack somebody else, it will not have that much of a time. It won't have that much of a, that much strength behind it. But countries that are imperialistic do that to other people. And guess what is the number one version of this? Any communist country ever. So the USSR and the United States are on the opposite sides of the coin. And they, they cannot work are together. Are they, Julian? You say that U.S. is not um, imperialistic, then. But I would disagree wholeheartedly. Look at our states right now. Mm -hmm. Hawaii. How do we get that? Imperialism. Okay, then democracy. Communism democracy. and democracy. Then Imperialism is a tool. It is not a type of government. Democracy is a type of government. I never democracy said imperialism. Can I use... said communism and democracy. But guess what is inside you said... of communism? Communism is a type of government that is linked directly with imperialism. Julian, you don't understand though. Imperialism can be linked with any type of any type of government. Name, name a type of government. Any type. Any type? Uh, uh... Monarchy is the first thing that came to mind, right? Huh? Monarchy was the first thing you came to mind? I was kind of thinking of monarchy. Yeah. Monarchy, which we both know is very imperialistic. So yeah. name another type. Republic? Uh, right? Yeah. Look at Rome. Yeah, well, Rome's imperialistic. Yeah, Rome wasn't- and it was a republic. Mm. It was also, uh... Monarchy. Exactly. I don't- I, just, and then, I, I and don't then, know anything about Rome, I'm sorry. It's fine, it's fine. I think I'm the only one who does. <laughs> I am the only expert on Rome. Yes, mm. exactly. Wait, how about, a uh, bureaucracy? Mm -hmm. What? A theocracy, where they believe Holy Land is where they're at, they're pilgrims, sir. So what does that mean? Are they imperialists? Did you just say that? that <gasps> oh my are... God! They are. Holy shit! <laughs> Dude, that just worked so in my favor right now. I didn't even know about that. Theocracy, the one people that follow mythos and they follow, uh, what is it called? Sh uh, what's the topic? Oh, 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 I completely forgot that you were asking what the topic was. Yeah, what's the topic? The topic of the conversation right now. No, that before, we are before, before, I don't care about this. No, no, I know. The, the thing that, that this whole podcast is about is. Go full fucking circle on you boys. I'm trying to find it. I forgot. <laughs> forgot the name. <laughs> I forgot the word. Was it like, uh. Wait, superstitions? Yeah. A theocracy. The one type of people that follow a specific sort of guideline that is of the holy text. Nothing more. Julian, what do they do? No, 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 no. Oh. They pilgrim to the Holy Land. And that's about fucking it. Oh. Guess what? Really? They... Who's, living in the, who's living in the Holy Land? Let's talk about Vatican. Who Vatican, is the living... smallest no, 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 no. empire in the entire world. Who is living in the Holy Land? You, you completely skipped that question, but when they go, who will be living there? Hmm? Who will be living in the Holy Land? Who? Who's the living there? The holiest of holy people. Really? Really? So do you, do you know what the Holy Land refers to? Uh, just areas that are usually... No, 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 but in the exact thing that you mentioned. No. Then your point is... Oh, wait, wait, wait. Like, there would probably be, uh, not Israel? Is it Israel? No, it's, uh... It's somewhere in that area. Yeah. But aren't people living there? And isn't there conflict there now? Thus showing that a difference in superstitions causes more conflict? In fact, you said so yourself, that Capitalism and communism are diametrically opposed because they have vastly different ideas because capitalism The reason why by the way that we were so scared of communism and what we used against them was that they didn't believe in a god It was an atheist uh, Thinking yeah capitalism not but you said to yourself that they are vastly different But because they see themselves as vastly different and because they believe that they cannot work together because they think that communism would be worse for a uh, Capitalistic society they don't get along mm -hmm. all of this is arguments based off of Superstition There is superstition Yeah Okay. I think that's a good like little like. Yeah. Little. Okay. So let's let's 
Like, I think that we should discuss our actual opinions now. Wait, wait. Before the, we, we have to make sure we understood our points correctly. So I'll say yours. You tell me if I'm wrong or not. I agree with your points. They make sense. Superstition will will protect people in the end. Mm -hmm. If I'm scared to go outside because there's a giant wildebeest that's going to kill me and is the god of thunder, then by me going in, by me staying inside... As an individual, I believe as yes, an individual, yeah. Be, as an individual, threats to me are lessened. Mm -hmm. Now, from what I understood from Ian's point of view is that with, con uh, with uh, superstition comes other superstition and comes conflict from higher powers and from other people that also believe in superstition. And superstition can not just be considered as superstition, but superstition can be considered as... Po uh, what is it? Can be considered as misunderstandings in the world, which in itself is not necessarily the direct definition of superstition, but still. Uh, you're a little you're a little sarcastic there, but sort bit. of, sort of. You're a little bitter. You know, maybe you're getting a little bit passionate, but I shouldn't be. No, you should. You know, I, I, I enjoy it. It's no, fun. but like, it's... But, uh, yeah, the, what is it? With that, with any sort of possible, like, misinterpretation can become conflict. And if specific people believe that specific things are correct in their views, that is the breeding of conflict. And... If some people have political, like, and if you go all the way to the roots of their values that include superstition, then eventually those roots will also go against somebody that has some sort of other, has another view that can lead to conflict. Yes. So, decompression session. Okay, I don't believe in what I'm saying. I, I believe in exactly what I'm saying. <laughs> I'm very, I'm very happy I got to be for my own opinion. Oh, God. <laughs> it was fun, though. I'm not going to lie. I was, I, was, was. I was living a pretty nice dream right there. <laughs> believing um, in the world and believing in, uh, you know, ignorance <laughs> being the bliss that it is. <laughs> Well, Actually, no, ignorance, yeah, ignorance well, being Julie, bliss. Well, Julian, that's usually my argument to things like this. Like, hey, who cares? You're happy. Yeah. But you know what? I really don't like superstitions. Yeah. Oh, I, I, I do use... not like superstitions, Ian? Huh? Do you not like superstitions? I don't like superstitions. No, you don't like superstitions? No. Oh. Where, where am I going with this? Where am I going with this? No, there's a difference between superstition and platonic lie, which is what I was waiting for you to say, but you never yeah. did. No. A superstition is an overarching belief, while a platonic lie is a one-time thing that isn't a superstition. It's mm -hmm. just a lie. Okay, so platonic lie, okay. Because platonic lies are usually based off of nothing. They're so yeah, I should probably, no, because platonic lies are actually just a complete, like, they're misrepresentation of the truth, while superstition could just be something that is a just... A misunderstanding. Yeah, a misunderstanding, or not even, could be something true, but is considered yeah. as a, like, no direct evidence proving that. Exactly. Like, Jesus Cristo. No. Okay, well, thanks guys, and uh, hope you enjoyed the podcast. Don't cut out any of mine. I'm afraid that you didn't. I'm afraid you're going to cut out all of my arguments. Oh yeah, they're going to make you look like you're trash. <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh, this this is Julian DeRazio. And this is Ian Sokolov. And, and remember, none, none of, of this matters. matters. And Ian Sokolov. And this is Meaningless Chatter by Myself. Guess who's not editing that out? No. <laughs> New track, please. Okay. Julian, we agreed. New okay, track. okay. New track. Okay, okay. I don't trust you, new track. Hello. No, 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 it's fine, it's fine. I'll edit. <laughs> I'll new edit track, it out, I'll edit out, please. <laughs> let, let it stay, the track. <laughs> new track. Please, let it stay. It's...